One week. Holy shit, one week. And the timber box that is my country catches fire. <laughs> okay. So two weeks ago, I put out a video comparing the influenza pandemic to our current predicament, criticizing the ignorance of those demanding everything reopen, and I got a few interesting comments. I wanted to respond to them, and I've been wanting to make videos where I respond to comments like this for a while now to accompany my main videos. This gives me an opportunity to connect with my viewers in a way that is hopefully entertaining. It will also serve as sort of a filler in between my main videos. So I plan on doing one of these for every video I put out um, from this point on. So. Without further ado, let's let's read your comments. So Android Covenant says, uh, "Good video, dude, but you forgot one thing: the government's responsibility is to subsidize wages, provide temporary UBI, rent freeze, mortgage freeze, etc." Uh, yes, there are idiots that want things to reopen and get a haircut, but half the people who are protesting are doing so because they aren't able to pay their bills. I agree, however, if that's the problem that these people have with crisis, then perhaps that's what they should be demanding. Not that we carelessly open everything back up, but that the government does more to help those in need. What happens when there's a serious natural disaster? Um, aid is given to those who need it. Yeah, this this is literally no different. It's, it's a natural disaster, and that's how it should be treated. Next up, Johnny Drive-By says, One correlation I think we can point to is how evolution has a way of allowing life to continue and not really caring about the species. Maybe that's too simple and generalized, but maybe evolution is a generalized subject that we complicate with our biases. Great video, I just hope that some can find truth in it. It's always good to see a comment from you, Johnny. Uh, from one Minnesotan to another, I hope you're staying safe during these, uh, these crazy times. <laughs> I hope that people can find truth in it as well. Thank you. David Murphy says, you're not going to do that. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> That's good to hear, David. Hopefully more people can take your lead. Stay safe. Hot3489-2J. That's a weird name. <laughs> hey, so great to see you again, my dude. Uh, Hot34892J, I don't recognize your name, but I'll be sure to watch out for your comments in the future. Thank you. Mr. Nobody commented, uh, truth. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nobody. Geek Overdose says, uh, Minute little detail you missed. Unemployment skyrocketed. People can't pay their bills. Who's going to feed their families? Uh, well, I said earlier, this is what I would consider a natural disaster, and I hope the government, wherever that may be, treats it as such and helps those negatively impacted. If your government refuses to do that sufficiently, then maybe it's time to get a new leader or even a new government. <laughs> if they don't have the interests of the people in mind, they have failed. Simple as that. Okay, next, Ill Propaganda says, Only puny secrets need protection. Big secrets are protected by public incredulity. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I think that quote is wrong, though. I had to look it up, and it's a quote from Marshall McLuhan. It's big discoveries, not big secrets. But the main point is the same, so yeah. Okay, failing at commenting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> People were perfectly willing to wear a mask and stay home as much as possible. And those who weren't deserved to be socially darwin out. Oh. <laughs> but then the government had to clumsily step in to fix what wasn't a problem and things went south. If you really want to enforce your will on population, on a population, you have to commit to it full China and beyond, with army patrolling the streets and dragging off potentially infected in metal boxes. Half measures only make things worse. I, I, I don't know if I can fully agree with that. <laughs> I think the problem is misinformation and how there's no mechanism on social media that forces these ideas to be challenged. Actually, the way these algorithms work is truth and misinformation are driven apart, which I've done a full video on. It's called the One True Death Algorithm. Uh, check it out if you haven't. I think if you find a way to identify misinformation and direct people towards accurate info, you can limit the number of people who fall victim to nonsense that is peddled by some. Uh, YouTube has started doing that on some videos I've noticed, and they're doing it right in my opinion. I'll put like a big box with a title above it, giving a source to accurate information about the subject in question. However, there are plenty of videos that refute these sorts of videos. If YouTube were to direct traffic to videos that are verified to be accurate, they would be able to keep people on their site, increasing the revenue. Perhaps if they had like a program YouTubers could sign up for where they make videos refuting other videos or ideas which could then be used by YouTube as that link, I think that would be a good idea. If they were smart, they'd do that, but I'm biased. Uh, so the main point I wanted to make 
was. I don't think measures need to be extreme. I think you just need people to know the right things to do. And I think where control can be administered, uh, it should be. Uh, but there are uh, certain things that I think can overstep the boundaries of control. Um, so like running into people's homes and shoving them into metal boxes and shipping them off somewhere to die. I think that's a bit extreme. Uh, I don't think I'd want to have that happen to me. I don't think others would want that to happen to them. So, yeah. So this one's kind of long. I'm just going to put it on screen. Um, Guapo Desperado hits the nail right on the head. Okay, so that was all of the positive comments. And now I'll respond to the critical comments and the weird ones. Okay, uh, this one's from nothing, or it's from from nothing. <laughs> uh, in each big recession, the elite mask their failures by forcing people to wear masks. <laughs> what? Okay, yeah, so, yeah, I, I remember the last recession, everyone was forced to wear a mask, right? That, that totally happened when the housing market collapsed. <laughs> Yeah, everyone had to wear a mask. I remember that. I remember wearing a mask. Mine had, mine had kittens on it. Okay, uh, this one, this next one, Dr. Weir. Uh, he decided to comment on my thumbs up to down ratio. Um, I say good. I actually want a bigger ratio than that because that tells me that the people I want to reach have been reached. If I can change the mind of just one person, I have succeeded. I don't know if any of you know this, but I intentionally mess with the metadata in my videos so that they get pushed towards people who will disagree with them. The ratio is actually bad for me. I've had way better ones in the past, like the climate change video I did. Oh, beautiful. Okay, here's another long one. I'm not going to take the time to read it. I'm just going to reply to it. You can. I'll, I'll leave it on screen. You can pause the video and you can read it if you want. Mark Taleos. You know what? I am scared. Not because I might die, but because if I were to get infected, I could give it to others, and they might die. Their blood would be on my hands, and that's not okay. When it comes to the mortality rate, that's, that's not what makes this disease so terrifying. Ten arrows shot accurately will do a lot less damage than a million arrows shot randomly. This disease can sneak into you and not reveal itself until you've potentially infected hundreds of others. With something like Ebola, you show symptoms almost immediately and proper steps can be taken. With this, it, it can hide in the shadows. This shit is, this shit's fucking serious. People are literally dropping dead in the streets from this and there are mass graves being dug for the dead. If you consider the fact that modern technology is far better at protecting lives today than it was in the 1900s, uh, then of course the mortality rates will be less severe. But what happens when the hospitals run out of ventilators and beds? What happens when those advantages go away? More people die, not just the old or the weak, but everyone at risk. You seriously think that it's better to let this thing spiral out of control so people can go and work? So the government doesn't have to step in and save people? All of society is built on people as its foundation. When that starts going away, so too does whatever is built on that foundation. Full hospitals mean non-COVID related problems will be treated with less priority. That affects everyone. With no hospitals, holes will begin to form in the machine. And the ripples from that will be seen everywhere. In all aspects of life. I'm giving the facts. And the fact is the best way to prevent major long-term damage to the fabric of our society is to temporarily shut everything down and treat it like it is. A global, natural disaster. You want to let the meteor hit? The tsunami wash things away? The fire burn down the city because you're dumb enough to believe the propaganda being pumped out by mega corporations? Then fine. But don't get upset when I call you dumbass for doing so. If you're so concerned about the people and the businesses who are struggling right now, then I'm not the one you should be angry at. Be mad at the leaders who fumbled this disaster. The ones who now refuse to adequately help those who are in need most. If that's your problem, then instead of wasting your time trying to spread historically dangerous ideas, take it up with the ones at the top who have failed you. Wear a damn mask. Holy shit. Okay, and this, this next one is from David Anderson. This is incredibly insensitive, shaming people because they want to pay their bills. Insensitive. <laughs> are you fucking serious? 
These people are going out and demanding that infection and death rates skyrocket. Is that not insensitive? If that's the issue, then maybe they should be protesting the lack of aid, the lack of action to mitigate this disaster. Imagine a tsunami is about to hit the, the, a coastal town. All right, the difference between it being a small wave that covers the shore and a mile high wall of water capable of pulling the entire town into the sea was people's movement, okay? And then you have a bunch of people in this hypothetical scenario who, despite knowing the consequences of their actions, are making as much movement as possible and, and encouraging and even threatening others to do the same. You don't think that deserves mockery? You don't think that requires action? Unbelievable. Okay. Now Clayton Henriksen says, If only it was as easy as the entire planet holding up in their homes for two weeks for a virus to be eradicated. Sorry, it's not that simple. I know it's not that simple. I literally said that in the video. And then explained why we need people, essential people, to do these things. Do you, did you even watch the video? Or, or did you just stop after that line? Seriously, there, there are countries that have literally done what I stated in the video. And in those countries, there's almost no cases now. If that had been done all over, this disease would be nothing. Like, literally no threat at all. It, it would go away so quickly. That was the point of my video. That was the point that I was making in my video. I'm sorry that that somehow flew over your head. Maybe you should go back and rewatch my fucking video and listen to my points. Unbelievable. Okay, so this is my favorite one, this next one. This is from Deconverted Man. He's an atheist YouTuber who's been around for a while, I think. I don't really watch his content, but we follow each other on Twitter. We're, we're acquaintances, you could say. And he said, Hmm, no citations and insults and repeating what everyone else has said? Okay, let's start with the first point. No citations. <laughs> Are you sure about that? In case you didn't know, I am probably the best of all the YouTubers when it comes to citing my sources. I have videos with so many sources that they don't fit in the description box. I didn't even know that was possible, but apparently it is. So what I've started doing for every video is creating a separate Google document to link my sources. But that wasn't enough for people because many people came and without even looking at the description are, were so certain that they were right that they didn't even look at my description for my sources. So I started numbering every single source and numerically linking it to the claims in my videos. This, this not only shows that I have sources, but it's, it's now easier for people to find the sources for specific claims or, or learn more about the specific subjects that I'm talking about in my videos. That, that, still, that, that still wasn't enough. Because despite all of that, people like you somehow completely miss my obvious and easily trackable sources. So this tells me that not only you didn't watch my video, but you're also so certain of your convictions that you assumed I wouldn't cite my sources. You know what we call that? Irrational. You're irrational. And with that, we move on to your next point. Insults. You don't like me calling ignorant people spreading dangerous ideas ignorant. See, I prefer to call a spade a spade, just like how I called you irrational, okay? The format for my videos like these is to break down the background info, give well-sourced info from reliable sources to make my point and argue my position, and then, when the ideas or people I'm refuting have been thoroughly debunked, I call it like I see it for fun. For entertainment. I'm sorry that the harsh words are able to hurt your fragile ego, but everything I say towards people at the end of my videos are well warranted. Now, my favorite part of your comment is this last little bit, where you say that I'm saying exactly what others say. Oh, okay. I'm saying what the experts are saying. I'm saying what my sources are saying. I suppose I could do what you do and just, you know, make shit up regardless of what the evidence shows. Such as uh, my sources apparently not being there. But then I'd be irrational. Just like you. But, but you're not making shit up, are you? <laughs> We've established that you didn't watch my video before leaving a comment. Which means you're basing everything you say off the comments. I don't know exactly when you left your comment, but it was probably after the first commenter left theirs. Because the first comments were from Gabriel, and these comments say almost word for word what you say. Oh, and Gabriel, my source for that is numbered to match my claims in the source list. It's not 50 days, it's actually 56, which is the most extreme case documented. But but back to you, Deconverted Man. Uh, we're fellow content creators putting out videos sometimes on similar subjects, which means that we share a uh, part of our audience. Your actions affect how others perceive my realm of video. 
I'm asking you to do better in your criticisms. I'm asking you to think before you speak. I'm asking you to think for yourself and not say almost verbatim what others say in the comments without watching the video first. Do better. Because you make us all look bad. Holy fucking shit. Okay. That was all the comments uh, left on my video. It didn't get too many views, so I didn't expect to get too many comments. Uh, I have another video that I'm working on, uh, on a hopefully less controversial subject. Uh, I don't know exactly when that one will be out. I've been working on it for a while. I've got probably three quarters of it done. Um, yeah, and look forward to that. Uh, when that video is out, I'll do another video like this, responding to comments on that one. Uh, so yeah, look forward to more comment response videos and my next video, which will be out hopefully in a couple weeks. Thanks for watching.